Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We're going to start out with Secret Lives of Color first, since I shoved that from yesterday to today. And I'm going to push the Will You Be My Neighbor over to Thursday. So because the Christmas time came in, I don't really want to do that much stuff in one day. <laughs> so, and probably you don't either. So we'll, you know, shuffle them around so there's more balance. We have more balance in our life. <laughs> So the Secret Lives of Color, we're still in the brown section, and I love it. Today is sepia. So it's that beautiful brown, and we think of it as photography. Like sepia photography is got the brown tones. It looks really old, and of course, you can use your um, graphics to digitize anything and make it change into those colors. But it became it came from an ink that uh, was just produced by uh, octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. I don't know what cuttlefish is, so I have to go look that one up. So there's a bunch about that in in the book today. So here is my block. I had to hunt around. My browns are not matching that well. I'm finding the same thing with the black, a few of them. I was looking at those the other day, but I'm good. I found this one and I think it looks really wonderful. And I'm even going to like bundles I have going like, what is in there? Can I find that shade? So I'm in this third section now of the last row. So this guy is ready to go. All right, let's do Christmas time and then we'll talk about some things that are on my wall and a couple other things. Okay, so Christmas time. We are on the second block of the mystery. There's four blocks, I think four, and then the setting. So, um, hard candies. That's it for today, hard candies. <laughs> I love it. Okay, here's my block. There's the hard candies block and you can see the cup of joe with it don't those look darling together well let's go talk about the fabrics for this one and then i use the foundation papers and i tell you a little bit about that so let's go do that hard candies are just part of the christmas holidays i like bowls of them they're just so pretty and my grandma had the ribbon kind and the other just really pretty hard candies so we want to make a pretty hard candy block and i am looking at the fabrics that come with this line so this line is Candy Cane, what is it called? Candy Cane Lane. Um, that is the name of the fabric line that I'm using by April Rosenthal. Uh, and so she has a white base, a red, a black, and a green. And then I'm using this super pale pink as my background. So my Cup of Joe uh, was this red ornaments and little green dots. So I don't wanna use those again. This is a small quilt. And one thing about a small quilt is uh, it, and a small quilt with larger pieces. It holds together cohesively the design a little bit better if you don't get too much going on. So I am not going to try to shove all of the colors in there. I think I'm going to keep it very tight to the red and green with maybe a little accent of the black and the white if I need it. So I'm going to sort of keep those two on reserve. And for the um, hard candy, there really isn't any reason for me to add them. So I could do all red. Now I've already used the ornament, so I'm not gonna use, use it again, but I could do like all red like this. Oh, there's a plaid, look at that. Okay, what a, there, look, look how cute that is. So you could do, you could do all red, and that would be really nice. Um, let me just put this up here so you can kind of see it. I could do, of course, I could do all green. That would be, uh, you know, there. I have the dots already, but there's a nice green tree there. And the green candy canes are super nice. Um, green Santa. So, you know, something like that. Oh, the plaid. The plaid, the plaid. Like, so there would be all green. But I think I want to do a mix. I want to, you know, not have just all red or all green. Now, I kind of like this plaid in red. So I'm thinking the plaid in red, and I like this candy cane on the green. And this candy cane comes in all of them. Here it is on red. The candy canes are pink and white, but I kind of like it on here. So what if I did red, green, red? So what would my other red be? How about the snowflakes? So they would be my three candies, which would then go with the cup of joe block. Now in the directions you'll see, if you have the papers, you may have got them in one of your 
um, so sampler boxes or you may have purchased a uh, grouping but they use this um, pattern you can use the one by two papers um, there's also sew and flip directions but I am going to go ahead and use this which is for the candy ends so they're for the ends of the candy like the little twists I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I'm sure Kimberly is showing you that on the video as well so I will cut mine and sew my block so have you been yelling there's four candies there's four candies there's four candies Pat <laughs> so I don't know I had in my head there were only three so I'll pick another green I think I'll go with the trees to work with the foundation papers whenever you purchase them oops I got an extra there okay so you have the directions in here that tell you what to cut and how to work on it there's some variations of how you can lay them out for blocks and then you have all the papers and they're thinner than like your regular writing paper um, and so I go ahead and make a shorter stitch length this will be working you're working from the back so it's kind of like upside down and backwards so the fabric has to be on the back side and then you'll be sewing on the lines uh, right on those lines here which will give you the ends so the red he will be here and then I have pink triangles which will end up on the other side like this to create two flying geese on one end I mean yeah two flying geese so one on one end and one on the other and then I will cut it down the middle and that will give me the flying geese which is the end of the of the hard candy block so watch Kimberly's video she will show you exactly how to do this and I'm going to fire up my baby lock and get the um, shortened stitch length and create these first thing I have to do is change the bobbin thread and the top thread because I had black in there and I really don't want to sew black on this pink because that'll be kind of dark and so I've got those changed and I also am going to use, I'll just take this off and show it to you, I am going to use the open toe foot to do this because I like the visibility of it. So I will have that on there. And so the thread is inside. I need to thread this up with the baby lock. I took my stitch length down one and now I mean I put a pin to just hold the red fabric down and then sometimes I put a pin to hold the unit in place on the line so I will take that out as soon as I start sewing so I'm going to sew on that line first just a little bit past either end and that when I've got so I've got that shorter stitch length going a little bit past either end and that will be the first side and then do my um, thread cutter so here and if I will this will be flipped over and pressed and it will be past the line we'll be cutting the block on this line on this line when you're using the foundation you have to read everybody's foundation to know exactly how they want you to do it but for these patterns you're cutting on this line to get your unfinished size block so I will trim away the red and then do the other one and finish the other two here it is sewn and then when you flip it over you can see the two units and I will be cutting on the line for these yeah so you get your nice ruler it's actually kind of nice to have these little cutting mats right next to your sewing machine so then you can just you know zip them around I can just rotate the little cutting mat so I'm going to do going to do the other two and then the last one so now they're they're still stuck together do you see like this so I have to do the last solid lines so do one and then rotate this guy and do the other one and I have two little flying geese for the ends of the candy I have to take the paper off paper is super easy you just do like a little press and then pull it off press the other side pull it off and then the middle just pops because it's not really connected to anything so there you go so see I did I did do the fourth candy 
this is what happens when I'm filming and um, as I go along is like sometimes I get in my head something and I don't realize it till I'm further along and doing the construction and I'm like oh I actually cut four of these but I didn't um, and, and the little squares it didn't sort of ding on me because I was doing the papers which I didn't need to cut as this I could need to cut the fabric a little differently for the for the little t um, twisties ends so anyways there it is and you can go forth and make hard candies today we had a zillion cup of joe so I think that we should see a zillion candy blocks <laughs> Okay, part of this is the uh, cross stitch part, which is also free from the Fat Quarter Shop. Aren't they wonderful? So I finished last week's. Yay! I got it done. So we went out to the um, airfield for uh, remote control pilots, remote control planes. And so here's a little picture. I took this out to the airfield. Uh, we were uh, there on Sunday for a several hours uh, Greg had a great time it's a it's a club that he just joined so we're having a lot of fun meeting the people it's so nice okay so you have another section now for this oh and I took this with me yes I took my Sloan zone bag and it was perfect because I could put in oh there's the pins did I take those with me too they were in there the, the little pins um, but I took took these and you know scissors and I was good um, to to do the stitching while we were there now this week remember I don't have a color printer right now uh, it's in color when you print it so this week we have a Christmas card and some mittens to go with the cross stitch so that's cute right that is cute I'm excited about that part let's talk about a few other things that are let's talk what's, what's behind me first I uh, got the boo crew quilt back and my friend judy quilted this and we discussed like the density of quilting i decided to do a really tightly uh, quilted piece just to try out the design so you can see it really great on the ghost because the ghost you know that gives it a little bit more dimension can you see that look at the spider web it's really really awesome and then down on the cat's eye one of them got right on the eye like in the middle of the eye isn't that cool so I have the uh, binding on and what I did is I glued it all to the front so I have to still top stitch it down I'm just going to do a straight top stitch on this one and this will hang in my kitchen when I switch things over so I'm very excited about that that it will be done now I needed to to do a label for this because that's that's what we do we do labels so I have this container that I keep labels in or potential labels and mostly I'm just doing a square and then folding it in half you know and then this is this becomes my label it goes in the corner of the quilt but I was out of squares so I went ahead and cut a whole bunch of them because there there is nothing that stops me in my tracks from going forward than to have to go find some fabric to cut into a label for some reason that is a stall point for me I don't know why it shouldn't be but I opened that container and there was no squares I was like dang so really I just I dislike cutting the squares I don't know why that is so I cut a whole bunch I found a thing and I've probably got about enough maybe for everything sitting there waiting to get binding maybe not enough <laughs> so I put them in my container and this is a container that came out it was a Milky Way container see that oops can you see yeah it's a little shiny but this celebrated uh, Baltimore album limited edition canister, canister 1997 oh, yeah I've had that a while <laughs> but it, it, that's that's where my labels are okay the other thing up there is ta-da red zingers look at them they're not sewn but I have them to audition you know for placement whatever I have my basket right here and I have another stack of squares back here so I still have a stack of squares and they need to be marked for you know where the the sew line is and I have I have to get that done but I I'm tempted to sew every every time I get four of them to sew them together 
you know, just just do it because then I don't have to fuss around later. I really find that helps me with a lot of these things. That's why I give you layouts in advance and have you sewing stuff together in advance because I really also don't want to get to the end and then have to fuss around. I like kind of getting to the end and going, oh, there's just this little bit left because I've been assembling as I go. It doesn't always work out depending on whether you need to maybe move some things around. You know you're going to have to move them around or you're not really sure on a sash color or things like that but this doesn't have those issues I mean I could like there's a few where there's like tulip pink on the edge well I don't want them all piled next to each other so I need to spread them around a bit but other than that there's really nothing I'm too worried about on those so I think I'm going to do that so four of them and then that'll be good okay I've got a mail call and then I gotta tell you about Norm. <laughs> so this is a mail call is from Brenda in Pennsylvania. And she sent me the most darling salvage that has bunnies and dots. Oh my goodness, looks like confetti, right? Dots. Okay, so where's Norm? Norm, when Norm and Nanette left um, Kendall, our ambassador in Australia, they went to visit another one of my friends in Australia. Because remember, they're going to be visiting a bunch of different people. So they went to visit Jane Davidson. Here's Jane and I. Uh, Jane Davidson is a longtime friend of mine. We wrote the Splendid Sampler books together, and she also lives in Australia. She lives north of uh, Kendall. And so they have been there. And so the first thing they did, I'm gonna show you over the next couple of days, some of their adventures, and you're going to go over to Jane's and read about it. So they have gone to the quilt shop. When they, arrayed, when they arrived, the first thing Jane did was take them to the quilt shop because I'm sure Nanette needed to see some fabric. She probably, Norm's not going to the quilt shop with her. So Jane took her to the quilt shop, took both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's where they are. They're in Australia. They will be leaving there um, next week and they'll start to travel to me. Uh, <laughs> and that will be fun and I will get to see them for a little bit and then they will go on to somebody else. So that is super exciting. So remember, go over to Jane's uh, website today. The link is below and at my article for today. Before we get ready to sign off, I want you today to thank your IT people. <laughs> your people who fix your computers, help you with technology. Today is to celebrate your IT people. Where would we be without them? I did that for 20 years and I just appreciate all the help that I get still from the IT people. <laughs> okay, you are going to make some hard candy. It's going to be adorable. I can't wait to see it. I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.